Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer from St George's Anglican Church, Paris, on Friday the 18th of December. The readings are from Psalm 49, Zephaniah chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 18. O Lord, open now our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 49 Hear this, all ye peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world, you of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will unfold my riddle with the lyre. Why should I fear in evil days, when the malice of my foes surrounds me, such as trust in their goods and glory in the abundance of their riches? For no one can indeed ransom another, or pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it, so that they might live forever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, with the foolish and ignorant they perish and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their home for ever, their dwelling through all generations, though they call their lands after their own names. Those who have honour, but lack understanding, are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straight to the pit. Their beauty shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their ruling, their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul. From the grasp of death will he take me. Be not afraid if some grow rich, and the glory of their house increases, for they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them. Though they count themselves happy while they live, and praise you for your success, they shall enter the company of their ancestors, who will never more see the light. Those who have honour, but lack understanding, are like the beasts that perish." Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Reading from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. Ah, soiled, defiled, oppressing city, it has listened to no voice, it has accepted no correction. It has not trusted in the Lord. It has not drawn near to its God. The officials within it are roaring lions. Its judges are evening wolves that leave nothing until the morning. Its prophets are reckless, faithless persons. Its priests have profaned what is sacred. They have done violence to the law. The Lord within it is righteous. He does no wrong. Every morning he renders his judgment, each dawn without fail, but the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their battlements are in ruins. I have laid waste their streets so that no one walks in them. Their cities have been made desolate without people, without inhabitants. I said, surely the city will fear me. It will accept correction. It will not lose sight of all that I have brought upon it. But they were the more eager to make all their deeds corrupt. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, for the day when I arise as a witness. For my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger. For in the fire of my passion, all the earth shall be consumed. 
At that time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia my suppliants, my scattered ones, shall bring my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of all the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. For then I will remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths. They will pasture and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham, and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Reading from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 to 20. At that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come. But woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for, I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains, and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, Truly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, so that every word may can be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. 
and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and for ever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works to proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, 
that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and that also by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all, evermore. Amen. May the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.